Hi, welcome again into the stream of activity number eight in that course of business planning. I remind you, we are working on planning your operational financials and this video is a demo, is a demonstration of how to use the theory, which I presented in the first video, to a real life business concept. So you, we go into that presentation as regards my own business concept and my, and my own simulation. I just remind you in the form of like a quick note uh, that in the section devoted to marketing and market research, I built that first market uh, understanding for the following business concept, which I want to develop, manufacturing small wind turbines and small water turbines, possibly in vertical integration with operating power installations or in horizontal integration with manufacturing other industrial goods. Uh, for like the sake of presentational simplicity, I assume that my essential market is made of households, mostly. And uh, in the section devoted to marketing and market research, I did research on the market of Poland, my home country, and the market of Germany, which is sort of next door. And the numbers that you will see in the following slides are based on the results of that market research. So if you want to understand better where those numbers come from, refer to the videos or to the PowerPoint presentations attached to the section entitled Marketing. So I did additional research uh, as for the value added, because this is what I was mostly interested in. And I, uh, I did it because, honestly, quite honestly, uh, as I am now, I don't feel up to designing uh, a precise business structure for that business concept. In the section devoted to people, in the section devoted to my goals and risks, I like outlined that structure, but this is just, uh, let's, let's say, a first estimate. Uh, I have nothing precise in my mind. So, in my demonstration, in my own planning of operational financials, I went for that reverse engineering method, which I presented at the end of the instructional video in this section. So, generally, I enrich a little bit my market research, I get additional data and on the basis of that data, I uh, reverse engineer my fixed costs and my gross margin and my break-even point. So I found out, I will magnify it a little bit to give you a better idea, to make it more visible. I found out that uh, when I sell those turbines. So when I essentially make for people small installations based on wind turbines or water turbines, the unitary variable cost makes around 60% of the price paid by small customers. Um, quickly referring to my market research, that average price was around 5,000 euro. So I can assume that my margin of value added makes around 2,000 euro on each installation sold or 40% of that price. On the other hand, uh, in the market of electricity, uh, the so-called levelized cost of electricity of energy uh, or levelized cost of electricity uh, makes about uh, 4 euro cents per one kilowatt hour in wind-based and water-based installations. And this one, I found it with IRENA. IRENA is, uh, or IRENA.org. IRENA stands for International Renewable Energies Agency. If you want to do research about renewables, it is like a good door to knock at. They have a, good, a lot of good, interesting publications free of charge, which you can use. And in that respect, uh, as for the sales of electricity from those installations, I also assume realistically that I will need to give like 20% of my gross margin or of my price 
uh, to the local operators of power grids hmm? because uh, most frequently renewable energies generate like intermittent peaks of energy which have to be stored somewhere and they are frequently taken by the local operator or by the local operator of the power grid and then they can be sort of reused huh? and the operator of the power grid takes 20 percent of that surplus energy as like their part their share in the business and i assume additionally this is here it is specified in red below that over the first five years of operations i can take a total of two percent in each of my target markets, so installations and electricity. Uh, this is a moderately optimistic scenario, which, uh, which is based on some science. Maybe this is not the right time to explain all that science. But if you have an acceptably efficient business structure, in the first five years of operations, you can expect to take like 2% of a relatively big market. Now the numbers. So here we go like into, into the pure beef of, uh, of the subject matter. So I estimate the value added, also known as gross margin, which I, which I can generate over the entire period of five years. This table is recalculated from the tables you can find in the section devoted to marketing and market research. Refer there if you want to understand where this one comes from. Of course, it is calculated with the assumptions which I have just discussed in the previous slide. So long story short, I have here that number, which is like central at this point to me. This bottom line here. This bottom line here, that small number, let me just quickly make it transparent. This one, this bugger, this 122 millions of euros are really the name of the game from now on. It is the total gross margin I can expect in my line of business planning to generate over five years of operations. And here it is important because in a moment I will translate it into the process of breaking even. Five years mean 16, uh, 60 months. Five times 12 equals 60. Okay, so we go further in the demo. So what I do now is I put my gross margin on a timeline. I assume that I have like zero sales the first month. From there on, I needed to simulate a path of, grow in, of growth in my business so as to reach a reasonable operational stability in two years from day, from day zero. Why two years? Because this is what investors usually expect from a startup. Plan over five years, like with reasonably long targets, but get efficient, get eff uh, uh, financially efficient in two years. And this is, by the way, the same assumption which I made when, while, uh, when I was doing my planning in the section entitled planning in this course, that I have two first years in my operations to get to full efficiency, to, get, to become able to generate a positive operational cash flow. So I take my calculation of gross margin for five years, so 122 millions of euro with a little bit of over the top, uh, and I calculate the average monthly gross margin. So I divide that number by 60, and I get this, those 2 millions 35,000 euros. I spare you the small euros here. And now, just to make myself an idea how I can get there, hmm? I make two scenarios. Scenario one is a Fibonacci chain of sales. So the sales of each consecutive month are the sum of sales from preceding months. And scenario two is the one when I reach that average monthly gross margin on the 24th month of operation. So at the end of the two year window. And I get to that point by improving 20% every month or by 20% every month. 
And here is what I get. That's the graph which comes out of those calculations. The line, which is uh, that sort of smooth, uh, maybe I will magnify it a little bit, that smooth line here, that one, uh, is the scenario of gross margin. Now I need to return to the, to the initial size to make the legend video, uh, to make the legend visible. So this line is the line of 20% improvement every month. And I reach the targeted 2 million euro of uh, monthly gross margin here on the 24th month. The blue one is the Fibonacci chain. Here I get to that like planned full gross margin per month much faster, like in the ninth or tenth months of operations. The dotted line, the horizontal constant flat line, is a hypothesis of fixed costs, right? I made it just arbitrarily to show you the mechanics of breaking even. So when I put that horizontal line of fixed costs against those two scenarios of gross margin, you can see two alternative points of breaking even. So two alternative points when the, the monthly gross margin gets over and above the monthly fixed costs. One is here with the scenario of progressive improvement by 20% every month and another is here when I assume a quick jump uh, along a Fibonacci chain. You can notice that each time between that horizontal line of fixed costs and the curve of gross margin, I have like a wedge, a negative wedge, an amount of fixed costs which I cannot cover with my gross margin. This is the cash money that you need to have in the beginning in your business precisely to finance those expenses which you cannot cover with your, uh, with your current gross margin. And here is the dilemma, for example, because I can be, I can be willing to spare money, to save money, and I move that line down right here. My negative wedge gets smaller, but smaller means a smaller fixed costs, a smaller fixed business structure, so lower, smaller a capacity to make an impact on the market. On the other hand, I can go the other way. I can increase my fixed costs, go there. I can say, okay, Whatever, I want to be quick and expeditive and efficient, so I instantaneously create a bigger business structure. Okay, but then the wedge, the negative wedge between fixed costs and gross margin gets bigger and you need more cash to start. You need a bigger cushion of cash money to finance those uncovered expenses. That's the dilemma about breaking even. Uh, do I want to break even faster or do I want to break even a little bit later? And what is realistic at all? What, I, what can I realistically achieve? Here I return to that concept which I gave you in the, uh, in the theoretical video of this section, that your fixed costs are the price of an efficient business structure you need and want to have in place in order to make yourself some room and some space in the market. Okay, I hope this demonstration was somehow informative or enlightening as regards the theory of operational planning and see you in subsequent sections. Bye.